from the heart of Dubai, where tomorrow is being built today to the world. Welcome to the CTO Show with Mehmet. Here, we redefine technology and reimagine possibilities. With Mehmet, delve into the riveting realms of AI, cybersecurity, and digital technology. Experience the thrilling highs and lows of startups. Immerse yourself in the spirit of entrepreneurship and witness the future of business innovation being written in real time. Now, without further ado, let's tune in and explore the future. Hello and welcome back to a new episode of the CTO Show with Matt. Today I'm very pleased joining me, Matt Swale. Matt, thank you very much for being with me on the show. The reason I make my intro very short because I like to keep it to my guests to introduce themselves. Tell us a little bit about you, uh, what you are currently up to, and then we can take it from there. So the floor is yours, Matt. Hi, Mehmet. Thank you so much for having me on the show. So excited to be here. So I am co-founder and chief business officer of OmniKey. OmniKey is an artificial intelligence powered marketing platform that uses data and analytics to get insights to why people are clicking and purchasing, and then generates creative at scale. So the customer's attention spans are getting shorter and shorter out there. OmniKey helps you follow your customers to all those different places they are and uh, a much shorter time frame and condenses the ideation and planning cycle for creative generation. Great. Thank you again, Matt, for being with me here today. So, like, tell me a little bit what drove you to be on this side of, of the business, I would say. Of course, like, um, to your point, advertisement and, you know, making sure that uh, you get the customer attention is something, you know, becoming yeah. more and more uh, difficult. So what attracted you to this domain and what was kind of, if you want, the aha moment, you know, like, yeah, we need to start uh, Home and Key. So a couple answers to that. So first I joined the company in 28 or 2021. So I've been with the company for three years. I joined Hikari Senju, who's the CEO and founder who back in 2018 realized that generative AI was going to keep getting better. And that data would be the power, like the, the key unlocking component to using generative AI to scale advertising content that's more personalized. My background though, I knew this was gonna be a critical component. One, because AI was on one of those trajectories of upward movement. In my background, I actually came from 13 years at a large company, Fortune 10 company for many years, AT&T, where I led sales teams and organizations and my last two years were in corporate strategy. And so I had done a lot of growth through direct sales and digital is the main enabler today. So what's flipped is in the past, digital wasn't always the baseline. Today, everything has to build off digital. And one of the major learnings you can have is if you're using digital advertising or marketing as, a, as your base, you can quickly learn what's resonating with the market, the value prop, the messaging for your different customer profiles and expand that to other areas of marketing. Uh, but I joined after meeting Hikari and I wanted to join a company you know, that was in the startup realm and uh, a future disruptor. And so three years later, we're in a really good place as AI continues to go and we've really evolved our product and listen, for, listen to what marketers want out there from businesses in the mid market up into the enterprise space. Uh, they, there's a similar problem by all and we're solving it. That's uh, great to hear, uh, Matt. Now, I know, you know, any, any product or any services, any software that, you know, goes and position itself as AI powered. So it must be relying on data. And I know like for you, it's the same. You leverage data to understand, you know, the needs out there. So from what you have seen, like, if you can share this, of course, like what are like some of the key data points um, that have been proven to be, you know, the most important ones, especially when it comes, because, you know, you mentioned something very critical and, you know, I've been, and I'm still kind of uh, in, in the field of trying to get the attentions of the buyers. So what are like these points that you, that you found that are most valuable in, in this chain of attracting the buyer's attention? Sure, Mehmet. Thank you. Great question. So 
OmniKey, one thing to note is like the only in-in platform that takes from data to actually launching creative. So there's a lot of competitors out there that are doing one or the other, but no one has successfully scaled the full loop of learning from data, making it actionable and in, in, in scaling it. Some of the major changes in the market just to note as well is creative is now the major lever for distribution. You can still target in the past advertising and marketing, you could target very granularly. Well, the access to first party data from the platforms is becoming more and more restricted. So these platforms recognize what's in an ad, uh, Mehmet, like they know what you like, they know what people in your, your household are looking at. It's gonna deliver you a bunch of ads that are similar to your likes and preferences. So today, creative is, is really one of the targeting levers. It has to be pers more personalized and micro segmented for the audience to get distributed more effectively. And what our platform does is we have these integrations with all the major platforms that customers are going to. Meta, Google, LinkedIn, X, Reddit, Quora, we're building out programmatic. And we use computer vision to identify the different elements in an ad created. Uh, and we have these integrations that give us performance data. So for each audience that you are, you are distributing for, you know how many clicks, purchases or leads are for those ads. And then you're scanning it with computer vision. It's identifying what are the colors, how many people, what are the texts within the ad, what are the texts outside of the ad? And it's making, it's, it's learning from this and identifying what are those common components for each audience. And it's gonna tell you what's the tonality for this specific audience. Say you're in B2B and you're focusing on like banking or retail. It's for that specific audience, what are those major components that are driving interactions? What's the hook in the video, for example, that's driving interactions? And it's going to make those very apparent. So then you can do two different things with it. One is you can, you can make iterations of a high-performing ad, so minor tweaks that help expand your distribution. And then also AI helps with brand new ideas. So all those learnings can directly fuel the creatives, and those can be like the key inputs to the new future ad creatives. So right now we're in the stage where it's really 10% human input on the front. What are your goals, objectives, your audience? How do you want to communicate it? AI can do the middle 80%, a lot of the ideation and a lot of the generation components. And then the last 10% is human review, edit, approve. And as AI continues to get better, and one other major element AI can help with is learning from your brand. You can use AI and multimodal, multimodal learning to figure out like across all your different brand assets, what's the tone, what are the brand colors, the fonts, and you can, you can pu help put up guardrails for you to move faster that used to take, you know, a lot of human hours. I, I love this, you know, uh, Matt, especially because we talk a lot on, on, on this podcast about uh, how we can leverage AI and the use of AI and collecting data. And here we can see how this, you know, it extends, I would say, not the capability because they cannot do it, but I mean, they, it helps the marketeers because it does a lot of the, you know, job that, you know, might take a lot of time for them to understand, you know, what the customer wants. So this is fascinating. Now, you mentioned something previously about generative AI, and of course, no one nowadays doesn't have any you know discussion or conversation without talking about generative ai so from your perspective how has generative ai transformed the advertising landscape in general especially in terms of scalability and creativity and i know like there's a lot of people who say okay it's not like always created actually we can figure out that this ad was created by chat gpt or maybe by a gemini or whatever so your opinion, how this plays here when it when it talks about creativity and of course scalability. Sure. So one is again your brand learnings. So the first step is how do I set guardrails so AI recognizes my brand? So you can have it scan and learn from hundreds of documents, your writing style, what are the what are your brand assets it likes? And that helps you move a lot faster there. The second, some of the other components are Every element can be dynamic. And what OmniKey's taken is really a layered approach to this because images can be good and they also can be challenging through complete generative AI. They can still have issues. So we give the customer options or the, the customer options of either 
AI generated images, stock, or brand assets. So, and then with the layered approach, you can use AI in different areas of the creative process. So you can use, you can set the, the ads for a specific audience, like I mentioned, retail or banking or something. It's going to generate a bunch of headlines and prompts and, it, and images for that specific audience that are going to be directly on the ads. And then it's also going to recommend mood board assets of like, what are some images you should be used in ads? And one thing we keep hearing over and over again is there's really two types of ads people want to move fast on. One is lifestyle or experience ads, people actually using a product or service. The second is like just product service um, ads. And we've made all these different components scalable. So you can, you can create a baseline ad that, that can be automated. And then you can dynamically switch out the copy hundreds of times for each audience, the images hundreds of times. And in the past, you know, marketing was broadcast and narrow cast, and now it's becoming more personalized. One ad would reach millions in the past, and it was a little, you know, a little bit more granular. Well, today you can scale ads across all your products and services. And then that data is the key component. Once they're launched, you can learn which colors of your product, which products are, are resonating the most and use those in the next sets of ads. But in the past, you had to make hundreds of copies. It would take hours and hours and hours. And the, the planning process could take four months. Now it's getting down to, you know, minutes for a lot of the early planning. Absolutely. Just a question that popped up really in my head now at this moment, Matt. And uh, I'm not skeptical by nature and, you know, but I love to hear different opinions. So now let's say it's a kind of a hypothesis now. I have two competitors and both of them, they are using such technology. So do you think for me as a end user, let's say they are into B2B space, right? Yes. Or maybe B2C space, what doesn't matter? Because at the end, you know, a person gonna take the decision. So do you think that for me, it will look like they have used the same technology because they both tried to customize the ad to me? Or do you think still they will hear the creativity from human perspective gonna still play a role in this sales model over here? What, what do you think? Well, there's two things I mentioned earlier. So at the front end, there's 10% human input and also learning from the brand. So it's going to be different because every brand has a different tone, a different viewpoint on, on what their differentiation is. And those inputs are going to be different. Um, and then the middle process is going to be automated. And the last 10%, again, like I mentioned, we give, we give options of using full AI generation, brand assets or stock images. So it, it will be different. And the one major thing that, that companies need to be more open to is something called multivariate creative testing, meaning you want to test lots of different things. You know, if you're looking for performance advertising, the key is to unlocking what is actually driving sales or leads, leads in B2B. And it's going to take a combination of, you know, using human, 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 real humans in the ads, user generated content, and then scaling a bunch of ideas with generative AI. You want to test them all, figure out what's working. And these algorithms are constantly changing. So you want to be adaptable and move fast. The other major thing, Mehmet, that, that I want to note is, Things in the news could positively impact your business. And in the past, it would take people a long, long time to, to react to those. Well, now the fastest to move could be in a place to really grow revenue when, when something really positively helps your, your, your company. You can move fast and you know, be launching a new ad, new ad campaign in, in, in hours. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, and I again thank you for answering Mac this question. And you hit, uh, you know, on the, the nail, you know, because exactly this is what I wanted to hear about the human factor over there and how even using AI still we can differentiate. Now, with your also extensive experience and you've worked like with big companies like at and and so on. So, and of course, your domain was sales and business development. So yes. how have you seen, you know, the sales landscape evolving with these advancements in the digital tools. So first, of course, you know, there was like the time where we start to use more digital tools, but now with AI and you know what I want to, to understand, or let's say, you know, curious to know from your perspective, 
When it comes to AI, of course, we're going to still have the human factor. But are we going, where can we go? Like, what are the limits for us to, to you know, to reach using AI? What do you think, you know, the maximum thing that we can get out of the AI? Well, it gives you the ability to move much, much faster. That's the main thing. With and, and it frees up your resources time to spin it on more strategic items like branding assets versus performance. But what's really changed in the market and sales over the years is back in 2009, when I you know first started leading sales teams, calls and emails were the main things. It was really phone back then and, and it was meeting with lots of customers in person. Well, the digital age has opened the door for globalization, meeting with customers everywhere. Phone calls go to spam. You can call your current customers and, and ones you have relationships much, much easier, but a lot of people do not like to be called on the phone anymore. And emails are going to spam because they're overloaded with getting hundreds of those a day. So what's flipped is, is now when digital is the base, you drive customers to you. So you could have a much smaller sales team that used to be doing almost all outbound looking for their own leads. They're still doing that because Marketing takes a complementary approach, but now you drive customers to you. You can meet with them in a much shorter cycle where if you're meeting some in person and some over Zoom or whatever your you know, meeting link is, you could meet with five to eight customers in a day and you're getting a, a lot more guidance. And instead of trying to refine like what's your out, like what is your value prop, your quick hook to, to get in the meeting, you're trying to refine what's my discovery process and make it much, much easier to continue moving that sales through the process from a demo discovery to demo to uh, next steps in closing a sale. So you're really refining that whole motion in there with a smaller team, meeting, giving the ability of your team to meet with many more people than they used to. Um, and so you can really test all that and then it helps the rest of your, your, your motions. And maybe one of the big things today is it, large companies have challenges with because they silo all these different areas of the business. They have organic marketing done by one team. They have digital ads done by a completely different team. Their data is in 10 different places. Well, the smaller companies can, can use these all complementary and AI can help fuel them to move much, much faster because really you have to have all those digital levers. You know, even pot, podcasts, for example, you have digital advertising where you're you're paying for views and, and reaching hundreds of thousands to millions of new people, your organic only goes to the people. It's like a really a retargeting, nurturing mechanism. Um, all these have to be used complementary. And that's really what has evolved. And then calls and emails are more of a follow-up tool. And um, it just gives you the ability to learn much, much faster than you used to. For companies that are doing it in the old way, it's going to be really challenging here. So, you know, a couple of takeaways, and this is very important. That's why I'm maybe repeating some of your points because I believe this is, you know, worse to, to repeat. So, and I agree with this. And, you know, we had a lot of discussions here on the podcast. And, you know, we all agree that nowadays and moving forward, you need to get that attraction. It's like more inbound rather than outbound. Like, I think this is the... You know, the way we're going to continue doing this. The second one, which is very important, Matt, you said like startups, let's say, or like smaller companies, they are more agile to leverage these technologies rather than the big guys, right? Mm -hmm. um, and this is why I always tell startup, uh, like founders, like guys, like really you need to focus on your marketing to generate, I mean, get inbound leads because yes. relying on outbound only without like doing anything to get these inbounds, it's, it's like not useless, but it's very hard and you are losing time. And you know, you the biggest thing you're fighting all the time is, is time, right? So now saying that, man, do you think like this is where the smaller players or the newcomers, let's call them the startups, will be able to challenge and be able to, if they adopt the technology and, you know, all what you mentioned, so they have the chance to really go into full mode of beating status quo fast than before, because we remember that any company that used to come, 
into the market to challenge the status quo, it used to take them like five years minimum to prove themselves. Do you think that with these technologies and AI, we can shorten even this to, I don't know, like one year, maybe two years? What do you think? Yeah, definitely you can. One of the biggest challenges I will say in early stage startup is identifying who is that ideal customer profile and staying focused. So a hundred percent, you can grow much, much faster than you used to, but you have to really kind of set guardrails. Who am I meeting with? Who do we drive the most value from? You have to learn really, really quickly from those conversations. We're a sales led company, which has been great meeting with thousands of marketers. Once Gen AI really hit that boom, when the original Dolly came out and then chat GPT, we were hearing from all the marketers, what the challenge is in, in building towards that and identifying really where our key area is. The main thing is startups have to identify is who are the customers I should not be meeting with, especially in a sales led company and set up some, some automation and, and, and mechanisms that route those ones to a place that's not using your team's time. Um, cause it, it's not a good fit. It's a waste of their time too, if it's not a good fit for them right then. But as, as soon as you can start to identify who are the most valuable customers, put your whole marketing plan behind those customers, meet only with those customers, the faster you can build and, and grow the company. And then once again, the large companies have the big challenge of they have everything's in different silos in it's really hard to use those data learnings from purchases, leads, organic likes. It's a lot harder to go use those fast. Absolutely. Now, let me ask you about this, and I'm not sure, if, like, feel free to correct me. And if you already have this, or are you planning? Because, of course, marketing is one important aspect, and we talked about ads and, you know, the content of these ads and you know the, the, the branding of these ads and so on. So do you think or do you currently have anything that as Omki you can integrate with other growth levels, I would say? So for example, product development, customer service, because you know, like I'm a big believer that you know it's not only the marketing, like everyone should be doing marketing actually. So anything that you have that integrate with this. At the moment, or are you planning to? Well, all those insights are used in product, especially in early stage. So like I lead the business side. We are in discussions with product from what we're hearing in the customers. You hear it. If you hear the same thing like five times across similar customer profiles, you need to make sure that gets uh, brought into product or you have some of your product team actually hearing this directly from customers. Um, so you are very involved in, in that aspect of it, but maybe if you could just ask a little bit more what you're looking for there, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So I was asking also about the customer support, right? For example. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so from that perspective, we are very focused in paid advertising today. The reason we did that is one, if you try to do too many things at once, it's really hard to be successful. The second thing is advertising, the paid advertising component has access to great amounts of data. It's all there available through APIs. And so we, a lot of our learnings can be used in other areas today, but we haven't built out any of that yet. It will be a future component like email marketing and things like that. Cause you can use a lot of the, the generative digital content that we create in those different mediums except we've really tried to stay close in paid advertising to be the best at that component. Got you. Matt, I have like a little bit, maybe some people will find it, it's a crazy question. Yeah. <laughs> but my point was, I think in 2017, that still there was like, okay, the initiative AI, it was in infancy, I would say, uh, even, even GPT-2 was not released at that time. But, <laughs> You know, there was a very clear uh, path that I've seen that this technology will come up one day where we're going to rely on AI in, in many things. And of course, one of it is uh, selling. Now, but I asked that time myself, and even I wrote a very short article on LinkedIn, I still remember, what if, if the other parties start to use AI as well? Like, do we get 
AI trying to sell to an AI, of course, not, not in the sense of taking the full decision, but maybe on the other side also there will be a kind of an AI that is analyzing all these inputs that are coming from different vendors. Oh, yeah. What, what do you think? Like, is, is this like something oh. too much science fiction or is it like something no. which is, might happen? No, I mean, social listening out there, there's all these different places your customers are and AI can help scan all that much, much more efficiently. I mean, you can really take AI, upload a bunch of documents about your ideal customer profile, upload your sales materials, things like that. It can learn from it. It's going to give you exactly how you should present that to that end buyer. And AI is just going to continually be put in to whatever place it can to make it faster. And the people using it are going to be able to move much, much faster. And we're in still, man, one of the things that's very apparent is we're still in the very, very earliest days of this. I mean, the technologies are advancing. Every release, you're noticing sizable differences, just like Sora and video got so much better than a year or two ago. And videos look like a bunch of aliens looking down on the world. It's moving so much faster. And the key is to keep learning on what all the technologies are and how do I, how can I use these to help move faster in different areas of my business? But completely, you, we are going to be in a place that you're going to be able to get insights about customers in a much, much shorter cycle and be able to move faster. Yeah, this is the dream of everyone who works in sales, right? So they want uh, the sales cycle to shorten and uh, things get done quickly. Which I think, by the way, people think that, um, you know, the customers are slow, which is no, it's not, it's not the customers are slow because actually they have to go over a lot of facts, data. And as you said, they need to go check outside what people are saying about the different product that they see. And yeah, I believe the AI can, can change that, um, of course, into the, the best uh, or better way, I would say now. One thing I was going to mention too is like yeah, the AI avatars, you know, people still really like the human element of it, but you could, you can train yourself. Uh, AI can learn from you specifically. You can record a 10 minute video and you can create an AI avatar of yourself that is continually getting better. And so just like you were mentioning all that listening out there, all the different places you're learning from, you can go feed your AI avatar a script and have a version of yourself that could be in all the digital places very, very quickly. And, and still it has some problems with emotions, tonality, but all that's getting better shortly. Yeah, absolutely. Like I remember last year when I tried these early, you know, they were very early still in the market, the avatars. And, you know, with the, you know, you can train the voice like uh, Labs 11, uh, 11 Labs, sorry. And, uh, you know, these other ones, and I think now OpenAI, they're going to have something similar. It's fascinating and mind blowing that I can have kind of a digital twin of me, you know, sitting and talking to, to people all the time. Even someone made a joke and said, like, maybe your digital twin would be doing the podcast. I said, no, this is the only thing that I will not change because I need to keep the authenticity here as well. So, yeah, this is the real me, not an avatar of me. Um, you know, one thing I want to ask you also, Matt, which is like not necessarily related to, to, to the marketing but it's about like building and you know moving from kind of fortune 10 company to an early stage startup so um what were like the learnings for you for having the growth i'm, I'm sure like things in in place like at and is pretty much different than than a startup so tell me more about this experience of growth well some of the best parts i the one great thing about working for a large company, I did over 13 years, like at least 13 different jobs. I moved at least seven times from Atlanta to all over Southern California, to Dallas, Texas, and the headquarters. And I got to lead a whole bunch of different teams. And one of the best things that carries over to startups is learning from the hard times and say, and also understanding sales. So sales is a lot about asking questions, but I made over 30,000 cold calls in my early days and met with thousands and thousands of customers in, in person and startups, everything is sales. 
and you're going to get knocked down. So once you start to understand, like after you've been told no hundreds or thousands of times, and you start to build up that resistance that you chip away every day, learning new things and keep chipping away at where you want to succeed. There's no immediate gratification and bringing that over to a startup is helped me so much. Just all the times of getting knocked down and realizing just keep doing it, keep getting better. There's two levers really that you look at in sales is activity. Uh, activities one, you can always do, and then getting better at the process or like, like we mentioned on improving the sales efficiencies. So those are the two that really carry over and large companies, you learn process very well. You get to be around a lot of great leaders. I, I worked for the global business officer that ran all the multinational relationships of at and And the last two years in corporate strategy gave me some really great ideas of financial acumen, go to market and bringing those over to a startup really helped me just all these tool sets that you, you have. Um, a lot of startups don't have those necessarily. If you've always been in a startup, you learn by doing much of the time and the operational processes and stuff. You want to move fast, but you do need some operational processes. And really that's, that's where you can make a quick impact. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, out of curiosity, Matt, also like uh, with the, um, with the, your current role and because, you know, being responsible for, for the business and I, I mean, like as a chief business officer, yeah. so like you get to have the first feedbacks, I mean, because, you know, you're talking to the customer. So from, from trial and error perspective and finding product market fit, like, um, how, you know, was, was there a kind of a pivotal moment in this trial and error at OmniKey that led really to, to have a significant breakthrough in, 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 so you said like, okay, now we have a product market fit, like any moment, like you can share with us on that. Yeah. Well, in the early days, you mentioned like GPT one and two. So imagine in 2020, we had the first early version of GPT in it. And a lot of it's building in the air. We had had some analytic tool in there as well. And some of the early creative process was, had a lot of human elements. Well, as these technologies improved and they still can be really challenging if you're using each one individually, a lot of the really amazing stuff you see on X and stuff that people are using, they're using five tools or more. So we were able to develop our own technology from hearing the thousands of conversations from marketers. That's really a workflow with, that has our own um, AI built into it from learning from data and layouts of ads, for example. And then we plug in best in class tools. So as we continue to refine the workflow, that's one of the major things like from the creative cycle can have seven people in it. For example, it could have an, a strategy ideation person, a copywriter, someone generating images or videos, and finally a distributor. So our workflow helps, helps them all collaborate and condenses that. And so really we, as the technologies keep improved, we've kind of been building ahead of the technology, I would say. Um, and you hear it over and over again, and we, we've, you build ahead and as that technology and those other best in class technologies get better, our tool just continues to improve. And the second thing too, Mehmet, that was a really crucial component was in the early days, you had a choice. Could you, do you want to just focus on like one or the one or two of the big advertising platforms like Meta, Google had 50% of the market, or do you want to go omni platform? And we made that decision to go omni platform. And it's, it was a fantastic decision early on and build out those integrations because like we mentioned, the customer's attention spans are getting shorter and shorter and new platforms are emerging all the time. So the companies wanna be able to follow their customers to all those different places from websites to social media. And that was one of the most defining moments early on. Great, thank you for sharing that, Matt. And really, um, you know, I enjoy listening to these stories of you know, listening to customers and then you know, fixing the product or like adding the features that the customers want. So absolutely, um, you know, great insights from your side. Now, if, if you want, Matt, like as almost we're coming uh, to an end, if you want to leave us with final words to 
marketers and uh, if anything i missed also feel free to add if, if any point like i didn't ask you so like this final thought from your side and where we can find more about uh, you and the company yeah so we're entering a day of more and more personalization we'd like to say micro segmentation today in ads because you can get much much more granular so you have to open the door and be and look for ways to drive performance through multivariate creative testing, testing lots of different messaging for each of your unique audiences. And for marketers out there, creative is now the major lever of distribution. So it takes a, cons a much, much, much more creative in a shorter cycle. The second thing is for those that are just getting started with AI, I always recommend subscribing to some of these newsletters. Uh, Ben's Bytes is one of my favorite ones. There's the AI Marketing Institute here in the US that has done a really good job with webinars. And they're gonna tell you a bunch of new solutions that are out there with the latest technologies. Go test a couple of those a week. You can plug, create a fake brand uh, if you don't wanna use your own data and figure out what is driving value and start to implement those into your, you know, your, your, your processes. And if you wanna check out OmniKey, go to www.omnikey.com and schedule a demo. We'd love to meet with you. And you can find me at Matt Swally on LinkedIn or Matt at omnikey.com. Thank you very much, Matt. And you know, just from my side, um, as you mentioned, there's, plenty, there's an abundance in, in, in tools and resources. So I always encourage people to go and try them and very, uh, you know, absolutely uh, great I mean, insight and hint from you, go try on not your data, try on something else and see how, how it, it, it works. So maybe you can do it. And actually a lot of people they did this with this chat GPT when it first came out. So instead of just you know, trying on their own things, they were making some, some brands. Like even me, you know, when I start to, to use it, you know, I started to use it very cautiously because I didn't know, you know, how accurate it could be. And then, I was not faking things, but I was just putting, you know, things that are not the actual ones and then see how it will, will and when I saw a couple of times that, yeah, it's, it's doing what it should do from my perspective. So I used this, so that was a great insight from you, Matt. Thank you for sharing this. And of course, you know, people, they don't have to worry about the links you mentioned, but I'm going to put all of that in the show notes so you can find the website and, you know, how you can reach out to Matt. Matt, again, thank you very much for you know the time today. I know like how much busy it can be, especially in a startup, uh, you know, environment. So thank you very much for taking the time and uh, you ha you came to 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 the show today. And this is how we usually end my episode. So this is for the audience. If you just discovered this podcast by luck, thank you for passing by. If you did so, please subscribe and share it with your friends and colleagues. And if you are one of the people who keep coming, thank you for it. keep tuning in. I appreciate all your feedbacks, your comments. Keep them coming. Thank you very much for tuning in and we'll meet again very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Hit that subscribe button. Share the show with your tech-savvy friends and fellow entrepreneurs. And leave us a review on your favorite podcast app. Your support means the world to us.